Hey guys, Davin Lynn, dermatologist. Today's video, we'll be talking about steroids and how it affects your skin. So there's a lot of misinformation about topical corticosteroids and its use in skin conditions. So dermatologists, as you know, we work with topical steroids on a daily basis. We've done so for many decades and will continue to do so. So the bottom line is how do we approach things safely? Um, what are the guidelines? What are the side effects of steroids? So let's dive straight into it. They're basically used to reduce the amount of inflammation in your skin. And common inflammatory conditions include things like, for example, acne, but also most importantly, eczema, dermatitis, seborrheic dermatitis. And also there's a whole host of autoimmune skin conditions such as lupus, lichen planus, etc. So in the context of when do we use that most frequently is basically to treat dermatitis or seborrheic dermatitis or atopic eczema. Now in this situation, because the use of steroid has to be long-term, we're very mindful about keeping the dose as low as we can and the intervals as short as possible. So how do we do it and why do we do it? So how do we do it is this. Generally speaking, your dermatologist will give you a prescription for a steroid, usually the minimum amount of potency for the maximum amount of results. For example, if you're treating really bad dermatitis, you may need to go higher than something like hydrocortisone. Generally speaking, what we do is we find you a solution which is stronger Hence, we get this under control a lot quicker before tapering you down. So just as a general guide, most of us are pretty comfortable with moderate to high strength corticosteroids only, but this is the catch guys, only for a period of somewhere between one week all the way up to two to three weeks. From there, what we need to do is called rotational therapy. Rotational therapy is, I think the buzzword now is cycling, which everyone uses, but it's a long-term treatment which dermatologists have used for many decades. So what we do is we cycle that, for example, with non-steroid um, topicals. So that includes things like pimecrolimus, your tacrolimus. If you have psoriasis, it may be something like coal tar and salicylic acid. So this way, you've got a treatment which is confined to that one to three weeks, followed by a rest period, and then cycle it back again. So depending on the condition, your dermatologist will pick a steroid that's suitable for your skin. Now, the biggest mistake that we see with this, um, and we see a lot of it, is patients using moderately strong steroids for a long period of time. So this is not what we like. We like the pulse therapy of the cycling, where we use it for a finite time, give it a rest, use it for a finite time, and so forth and so forth. So it cycles through. If you use a moderate strength steroid, and not something like moderate to strong, and use that over a longer period of time, that's when you can run into trouble. So in this situation, what dermatologists do is that we try to give you a minimum amount, but also we may supplement that. For example, if you have dermatitis, they might supplement you with something like narrowband light, um, which can help, or like I said, they replace that with a non-steroid treatment. And once again, something like tacrolimus or pimicrolimus. So we try to give you that minimum amount, supplement it with a non-steroid, and that cycle continues. So what are the side effects associated with topical corticosteroids? The main one is skin thinning. So we basically thin the skin down. That can lead to various complications. For example, striae, which are basically like stretch marks, can also lead to bruises and fragile skin, which means your skin, if you have trauma to it, can easily bleed and bruise. So that's the first thing. Secondly, it can have uh, postular eruptions, so something like acne. If you use steroids on your face for a long period of time, you may be steroid dependent, and that's called perioral dermatitis, or POD, which is very similar to steroid-induced rosacea. So that's pimply lesions that you are dependent on the steroid with. So perioral dermatitis, or steroid-induced rosacea, is basically steroid dependence, and hence it's very hard to get patients off the steroids. Your dermatologist, however, can easily treat this with a short course of anti-inflammatories taken orally, such as doxycycline or erythromycin. If you're more for the topical route, they can prescribe you something like tacrolimus instead of being on the steroids. Importantly, when we talk about absorption of steroids systemically, that's when it can lead to more severe problems. For example, we know cataracts in the eyes that can occur. We also know that it can suppress your adrenal system. So patients who are Strong corticosteroids over large body area, classically with your eczema patients and your psoriasis patients, that can lead to steroid dependency 
not only on the skin, but also on your internal organs. The other thing that we're mindful of is something called tachyphylaxis. So this means when you put steroids on your skin, it fails to actually achieve what the steroid wants to do. So it can become steroid resistant. So guys, in summary, steroids, you got to respect the actual action. You want to use them for a minimum period of time. You want to cycle it with agents which are non-steroidal. You want to hit your dermatitis or your skin inflammation short but sharp and then transition off that. So be guided by your medical dermatologist. Guys, I hope you liked that video. It's a very short one, but it's a very important one on the use of topical corticosteroids. See you shortly.